Isn't it a beautiful day today? It's a good day to worship Jesus Christ. And I want to welcome you today. If you're in your car here in our parking lot, if you're joining us live on Facebook, or if you're sitting on your front porch in our Old Fields community, I am glad that you're a part of our worship service today. As we think about worship, we know that our worship is not of ourselves. It's not about what we want. It's not about what we do. It's not even about what we get out of it. Worship is about Jesus Christ. And it's putting all of our focus, all of our attention, all of our everything on Him. Let's start, begin by singing together. Come, now is the time to worship. Let's pray together. Father God, we're thankful for the time that we can worship together. Father, we're, we're thankful for all these avenues that you have provided for us to be able to worship. And we're thankful for our freedom to be able to do so. So Lord, we ask you as we glorify you to work in our lives. Because we want to be more like your son Jesus. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And as we worship, we ask him to just open up the heavens. Because we want to see Jesus.
because we want to worship our Savior and our God. Oh, 
chapter 1 verse 15 it says he is the image of the invisible God the firstborn of all creation he created all things in heaven and on earth visible and invisible whether they are kings or lords rulers or powers everything has been created through him and for him he existed before everything and holds everything together he is also the head of the church which is his body he is the beginning the first to come back to life so that he would have first place in everything God was pleased to have all of himself live in Christ. God, so God was also pleased to bring everything on earth and in heaven back to himself through Christ. He did this by making peace through Christ's blood sacrificed on the cross. Let's continue worshiping, singing the stand. <laughs>
we stand with our arms high, our hearts ready for whatever you want to do in them. Lord, as we go to your word, we ask you to speak to us. Not just our minds so that we know. Speak to our lives so that we can be changed. So that we can be more like Jesus. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, if you have your Bibles with you, turn with me to the book of Luke. We're going to be in Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. And as you turn there, I read a story a long time ago, and I had to go back and search to find it, but it was a story where a newspaper had asked a teacher to, to have her class to draw pictures. It was Thanksgiving time. To draw pictures of what they were most thankful for, and the paper would publish those pictures. So, uh, they, 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 as you can imagine, some of the kids drew turkeys. Some of the kids drew a, a huge feast. Some of the kids drew pilgrims and Indians. Some of the kids drew families. But one little boy drew a hand. Well, you'd think, okay. But that hand, that picture of that hand, caused so much debate in the paper. Folks were wondering, what did the child mean by the hand? Something I'm thankful for, and they drew a hand. Well, well some, so, so they started trying to guess what the hand was for. Some said it was the hand of God who provided the, the Thanksgiving meal. Now, that would probably be a pretty good guess. Others said, well, you know, some said it was the hand of the farmer who grew the food for the Thanksgiving meal. It wouldn't be until later on that they would find out from that boy what he meant when was something he's thankful for when he drew just a single hand. This morning, I want us to, to think about making a difference in the lives of others. And to do that, we're going to go to a story that Jesus told, uh, one of his parables, and it was someone who made a difference in the lives of others. So we're in Luke chapter 10. We're going to start with verse 25. Luke chapter 10, 25. Then an expert in Moses' teachings stood up to test Jesus. He asked, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered him, What is written in Moses' teachings? What do you read there? He answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. Jesus told him, You're right. Do this and life will be yours. But the man w wanted to justify his question. So he asked Jesus, Who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man went from Jerusalem to Jericho. On the way, robbers stripped him, beat him, and left him for dead. By chance, a priest was traveling along the road. When he saw the man, he went around him and continued on his way. Then a Levite came to that place. When he saw the man, he too went around him and continued on his way. But a Samaritan, as he was traveling along, came across the man. When the Samaritan saw him, he felt sorry for the man, went to him, cleaned and bandaged his wounds. Then he, he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, the Samaritan took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper and, and told him that to go ahead and take care of him. And if you spend more than that, I will pay you on my return trip. What, what of these men... Who do you think was a neighbor to the man who attacked the robbers? The expert said, The one who was kind enough to help him. Jesus told him, Go and imitate his example. When asked, Who is my neighbor? Jesus responded with one of the neatest parables. Now, we know from the Gospels that Jesus was actually quite a storyteller. He would illustrate his, his points or illustrate his teachings with these parables or with these great stories. And the thing, as I look at Jesus' stories, I think there's two things that made his stories so great. First of all, the parables always emphasize the point in a way that the, the common person could understand. 
So Jesus would, would tell this story so, so that they could, under, they could hear this story and they would know the point he was making. But the second thing I think that Jesus did with his parables was Jesus would often use his stories to show the wrong in those who thought they were so right. I mean, think about it. In this story, who were those that should have helped the man? Well, first of all, there was the priest. The, the priest is the religious leader. But when the religious leader comes walking by and sees the man laying in a ditch all beat up, what's he do? Walks on by. Then the, the next one came up was a Levite. Now, Levites were probably also part of the priesthood, but you can look at the Levites as they were scholars of the law. They were those who studied the word of God. So the second person to come by in the story was someone who, who they were a scholar of God's word. What did they do? Walked on by. Didn't pay attention to the man beat up in the ditch. But look in the story who helped. Now notice the one who, who was the one who, who helped whenever the man needed help. It was the Samaritan. Now I think Jesus did this on purpose. Because the Jews hated the Samaritans. Matter of fact, they despised them. The Jews would call the Samaritans dogs. So when Jesus has the priest walk by and did nothing, the Levite walks by and did nothing, and then in the story, the Samaritan is the one who helped him. Now what I think makes this story so neat is, notice who asked him the question, who is my neighbor? It says he was a lawyer. It was a learned man. It was a who's who in Jewish society. So I think what Jesus was doing, Jesus is not only telling the man uh, you know, the, the story, but he's telling him, that folks who were like him refused to help. But somebody that this man would have looked down upon, would have despised, was the one who was the true neighbor. So this morning, I want us to look at being a true difference maker in someone's life. And to do that, let's start with a question of our own. And that question is this. Why should we bother to make a difference? Why should I bother? Why should I be a difference maker? Now, there's a lot of reasons why we should bother to make a difference, but this morning I want us to look at three. First of all, we should be a difference maker because our world depends on it. We should be a difference maker because our world depends on it. Think about it. The world we live in would never survive if folks didn't help other folks. We wouldn't survive in our world if folks didn't take a minute to, to, to respond or, or to help someone else. Now, look at the story for a minute. How many people came by the man who was beaten laying alongside the road? Three. There was the priest. He walked by on the other side. There was the Levite. He walked by, came, took a look, walked right on past. Can you imagine? I want you to stop and think. Here's a man beat up alongside the road. What would have happened if the Samaritan hadn't stopped to help him? He possibly could have died there, right? He, he, he probably could, could have died. Now, it's easy for us to see around us the priests. It's easy for us to see the Levites. Oh, I'm not going to get involved. I don't have time for this. I'm not going to get my hands dirty. I can almost... <laughs> as, as I look at this story, it, it reminds me of a young lady we had in children's camp one time. Now, th this was a sweet young lady, but she had just a tad bit of an attitude. And, and we're every day at children's camp, the kids have chores to do. And one day they're doing the chores, and, and I look at her, she's doing absolutely nothing. And, and somebody said, well, you need, they were cleaning up the dining hall. And this little girl looked at whoever told her, hey, you need to help. And she tossed her hair, and she says, girls don't sweep, and girls don't mop, and girls don't sweat. When I look at the story, I picture this, lady, this little girl just like the priest and the Levites in the story. And you know, I picture that like a lot of folks today. I'm not going to bother myself to help others. 
It's easy for us to see, but could you imagine a world without good Samaritans? Could you imagine a world without those who are willing to get involved? Without those who are willing to help? Could you imagine a world without the compassion of people? If without that, our world would disintegrate. It would fall apart. So what do, what do we do? Our world depends on difference makers. Why do we need difference makers? Because the world we live in depends on it. The second reason why we need difference makers is we should be a difference maker because our fulfillment in life depends on it. Jesus never tells us how the Samaritan felt after he cared for the man. Well, it really doesn't matter for the story that Jesus is telling. He doesn't say, you know, and he did this and then he had a glow or he felt good. Now, but here's the thing. We know he probably did. The point Jesus was making, he was trying to teach the, 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 the lawyer, this neighbor was whoever needed him. But could you imagine being that Samaritan? You probably can because you've done things for others. You know that good feeling you get for helping? That, that, that just kind of puts a little spring in your step, puts a little smile on your face, even if it's just something little that, that you've done for somebody else. kind of makes you feel good. Yesterday, I was at everybody's least favorite uh, shopping experience. You know, the one where you wait in line to go in and you wait in line before you get out? And, but as I was going in, there was a lady, and I won't call her elderly, she was older than I was. And, and she was standing there waiting in the line to get in. And it came up to my turn, and, and rather than her going to the back of the line, I just looked at her and I said, I think you were in front of me. And she looked at me kind of confused for a moment, and then she says, well, yes, I was, thank you. And away she went on my turn. Now, but you know, I didn't do that for glory. I didn't do that for, I didn't even do that so I could tell you that story this morning. But you know, I kind of went through the, the, the store with, with a little spring in my step. Why? Because it feels good doing something for others. It feels good being a difference maker. And as we look at it, Jesus is, is teaching us to be a dis dis difference maker. In the book of Acts, we see the Apostle Paul collecting money for food for the starving Jews in, in Jerusalem. How do you think he felt? The Bible doesn't tell us. But throughout a whole missionary journey, he, he's collecting these funds. He's telling folks, hey, you be collecting, and when I get there, I'll take it on with me. Could you imagine how he felt when he was able to come and, and hand over money collected from Christians all over the world? He had to have that good feeling. I'm, I'm sure even the Apostle Paul was glowing inside. You know what? That's the same feeling we get when we help someone else. We don't do it for the glory or the fame. Now I know every once in a while I think there's folks who probably do. They, they do it so they'll get their name in the paper or be recognized or somebody will give them a pat on the back and say, oh, that was a great thing. But, but really, we don't do that, do we? We do it just to help others. We do it to, to be a part of it. And it feels good. Our lives depend on doing good. So, so why should we be a difference maker? Because our lives depend on it. The third reason, and if nothing else, I think this is the most important. We should be a difference maker because God expects it. What was the last thing? Now think about it. What was the last thing that Jesus told his disciples before he ascended into heaven? You remember? We find it in Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you, and surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. We know that that's a great commission. That's Jesus' marching orders for, for his disciples. You know what Jesus is telling us? Jesus is telling us, get out of your homes. Get out of your neighborhoods. Get out of your work to your workplaces. Get out of your comfort zone and make a difference. Here we're to be able to make a difference with the gospel. But he's teaching us that you and I are to be difference makers. We're to be folks who, who make he didn't say go and serve yourselves. Jesus as his last command to his disciples didn't say go and make lots of money. Jesus didn't say, go and do whatever you want. 
the command that Jesus left with his disciples was go and make a difference in other people's lives. He is, was instructed them, turn the world upside down for him. Why should we be a dis difference maker? Because God expects us to. So folks, you and I need to be difference makers. So it takes us to our second question. Who can God use to be a difference maker? Because I want to guarantee you, there are folks who hear this message and are going to say, well, I can't do that. That's not for me. It's not up to me to do that. That's beyond my ability. Who does God use to be a difference maker? Let's look at some of those. Number one, some of the difference makers in the Bible, first of all, resisted at first. So, so God can use a diff make a difference maker out of somebody who resists at first. When Moses stood in the wilderness in front of that burning bush, Moses was probably tickled to death that God had heard the oppression of his people in Israel. Moses was probably thrilled that God was going to do something about it. But then in Exodus chapter 3 verse 10, God says, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. You remember what Moses did then? He came up with every excuse under the sun to keep from being the difference maker that God used. He even said, Lord, I cannot speak well. God says, that's okay, I got that covered. Well, whatever it was, he, he came up with every excuse. He didn't want to be a difference maker. The man that's considered to be Israel, one of Israel's greatest leaders tried to get out of being a difference maker. Another person I look at when we think of who's to be a difference maker, some of the difference makers in the Bible were unqualified. So your second thing is some of those difference makers were unqualified. Let's look at a couple. First of all, the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul in Scripture probably brought more people to Christ than any other person on the earth. He definitely wrote the major part of the New Testament. But he, he, he probably brought more people to Christ than, than anybody else that we have a record of. But you know what he said? He said he was not even an eloquent speaker. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, Paul said he couldn't even preach. If anything was done, it was because Christ did it in him. So, so what, what did God do? God used somebody who was unqualified. Paul says, I can't even preach. And he probably brought more people to Christ than anyone else we find in Scripture. David, let's use another example. David probably mentioned more than any other person in the Bible. You look in the Old Testament, we have a, a whole story of David's life. Except for Jesus, of course. But, but David, David's one of those folks that, that we hear so much about. But you remember, you remember when Samuel the prophet came to Jesse's house, David's father, to, to see, to, to anoint one of those boys as king? You remember what happened? You remember that story? Jesse brought all of his sons up for Samuel to see. Started with the oldest, works his way down. Every one of them, Samuel goes, nope, that's not it. You remember where David was? He was so underqualified to be king, his dad left him out in the field. So who can God use to be a difference maker? He can use the unqualified. If God chooses to use us to make a difference... No matter whether we think we can or not, God uses the unqualified. The third person I find in Scripture that God uses is some of the difference makers in the Bible got off to the wrong start. They didn't start off well to be a difference maker. You know, sometimes we can relate to that. We didn't start off well in our life. We didn't start off well last week in being a difference maker. But if you think about it, what it, God told Jonah to go to Nineveh. And Jonah went as far in the opposite direction from Nineveh that he thought he could go. Because he didn't want to be a difference maker. He didn't want to see the people of Nineveh change and, and repent and, and turn to God. 
So he went the other way. Now you're familiar with the story of Jonah. Ended up in the belly of a great fish. And God gave him another chance. Let's go to the New Testament. How about Peter? The Apostle Peter. When it came down to it, they said, you're one of his followers. Peter swore and said, no. I'm not, I don't even know him. But God gave him another chance. Some of those in the Bible, some of those great difference makers, they got off to the wrong start. Say, Pastor Dan, what are you trying to tell us this morning? Here's what I want you to know. I want you to know that no matter who you are, no matter what you've done in your past, and no matter where you are right now, God wants you to be a difference maker. God wants you to make a difference in the lives of others. He wants to use you to change this world for Jesus. You say, well, Pastor Dan, I'm not where I need to be right now. Then thank goodness there's forgiveness. And right now, wherever you are, you can go to Christ. Ask His forgiveness. He'll forgive you. Now that sin's not in the way. And you can begin today to be a difference maker. You remember the little boy I told you about? The one that his Thanksgiving picture was a hand. It was many years later. Every year that uh, the, the paper would post that same picture. It was many years later they finally found out what the hand was. It was the hand of his teacher. The one that he said made the biggest difference in his life. You know what God wants us to do? He wants us to be that hand. He wants us to make a difference. So folks, I want to challenge you. Go and make a difference in someone's life today. Make a difference in someone's life tomorrow. Make a difference in someone's life the next day. Make a difference in someone's life next week. But God has called us. He's commanded us to be difference makers. Maybe this morning you're not a difference maker. I've already told you you can confess that sin and ask for forgiveness. But actually being a difference maker starts with something before that. It's surrendering your all to Jesus Christ. So that no matter who you are, or where you are, or what you've done, He can use you. How do we do that? We can admit to Him that we're sinners. And we can't save ourselves. But we believe that His Son Jesus paid the price so that we could have everlasting life. Today, folks, if you'll surrender to Him, surrender your everything to Him, He will begin that process to make you a difference maker. Maybe this morning you hear this message and you say, well, I'm already a Christian. But I don't know if I'm making a difference in anybody's life. Then I want you to go to Christ and just tell Him, I want to be a difference maker. I want to I want to spend time with you. I want to be in prayer. I want to read my Bible. I want to fellowship with other Christians so that I can listen when you tell me, Lord, so that I can be a difference in someone's life. God wants you to be a difference maker. So my question this morning, are you? Are you a difference maker? And what do you need to change to become one? Let's pray together. Father God, I'm so thankful that, that your word teaches us that we can be difference makers. That, 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 we, that you want to do a, a big work through us in the lives of those around us. And Lord, no matter how small or matter how, how big that, that may seem to, to us, Lord, we know that you can do it. So help us, God, to make a difference in someone's life today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to leave you with a couple things today and a, a couple announcements. Uh, first of all, those of you who are 